Hello and welcome to another episode of Getting Dirty with Glenn. Today, we're gonna do one of my favorite things or actually plant one of my favorite things that I can use in my kitchen every day. I've got a cold frame I built probably six, seven years ago. And we're gonna try a couple different cameras today, starting off with the iPhone. Um, and DJI wireless mic, and then we're gonna switch out to a chest camera, the new Action 4, to see if that gives you a little bit better uh, idea of what I'm doing when I'm doing close-up work. So let's get started. All right, here's the cold frame. It faces south, and so we've got radiant heat coming off the pole barn here, and I'll see the glass faces south. I built this out of Douglas fir. I believe they're two by tens. Douglas fir, I didn't want to also use treated lumber and cedar lumber like I do a lot of things for my clients is out of my personal price range. So Douglas fir, you can see six, seven years later, there's no issues with this. Um, it's working just fine. And um, then all of the, these two side lights that are here, that are right in here, um, are actually from Home Depot. They I don't know, just randomly we had gone into Home Depot and they had a clearance cart out by the cash registers with special order stuff that was never picked up, didn't fit, was returned or whatever. I got each of these, uh, well, let me guess, uh, or let you guess what I paid for each of these window panes, custom built window panes for either side of a front door. Okay, lower, nope, lower than that. Keep going lower. We'll play prices right today. I believe I paid 67 cents, 67 cents for each of these, or maybe a dollar 67. I'd have to go back into Evernote and pull the receipt up. But it was insanely crazy because these are like $112 a piece uh, normally. And that was the bargain of making this. And then um, I cut out just a little square right here that I'll show you and I've got the different camera on. Let me get the daylily flower out of the way. I gotta clean that up. But I have to unlock these two to lift this up. As you can see right inside there, that silver or metal that you're looking at will look a little bit better when this is opened up, is um, a wax filled cartridge that automatically opens this frame like today, I think it's about 38, 40 right now. But it, on a warm day when it's like this afternoon, this would actually be open up about four or five inches. So I never have to deal with, oh geez, is it too hot, is it too cold? It does it automatically. And you can see from uh, some arugula seed that was left over from last year, that that has germinated sometime since uh, by the size of that, I'd say that probably germinated about a month ago, so that put that back into February sometime. But I'll open this up, switch cameras, and let's take a look at how this co cold frame was built. All right, so let's go up here, take a look at this, got this other camera on. Like I said, to open this up, because we had to uh, put this wax cylinder in here, this is the only way I could figure out how to do this. Um, it's worked for all these years. Take this out, hold it in, and when you pick it up, you'll see the uh, cartridge hanging up there. So this cartridge, let me pull this forward here a little bit, make sure you can see it. This, this cartridge, Right here, you can adjust how it opens right here. This cartridge is full of wax. As the wax expands, then it opens and closes this. Now, I also put some styrofoam in here, rigid insulation. I would use the pink stuff. I don't know why I didn't, um, but put the rigid insulation there. When you get down here, you can see that I've got this drip irrigation and there's heads throughout here because this is a little dry right now, but I've got to just pull these weeds out of here, get my gloves on, and uh, it's real easy. This is a raised bed. You can see it's about six inches above the ground. 
I've used compost over the years. It's really dry now from the winter, but uh, I can hook it up to drip irrigation. It'd be good. Drip irrigation is on a timer so that I can come out here, just use a quick connect from the garden hose and say, okay, 20 minutes. I can control that on my phone, of course. I can control everything on your phone nowadays and it'll run for 20 minutes and get everything germinated. But this arugula in here, let's see. Yep, peppery, great in a salad. You can see how well that's grown. Just fantastic how that's grown up. But I've got to get that cleaned up. And then I've got some new seed to put in here that I'll water in with a watering can. And then I'll connect the drip irrigation and uh, we'll make it real easy from there. All right, if you've seen my other videos, you know that I like to use this flexi uh, thing for pulling weeds or picking up debris in general. Pull these roots out and see if you've got well-established roots on these weeds. Now with arugula, when you harvest them, you don't pull them out like that. You cut them back and they continue growing. So it's not like you just plant the arugula and they're done. I've got a lot to clean out of here. Pull that arugula out. A few grassy weeds in here that have died off. What's nice about this is it does a clear growing season. I can grow arugula normally late into November in here. I just have to remember to buy the seed at the beginning of the season because if I just want to go to one of my local garden centers, they're usually out of seed in November or they don't have it out. Got to clean up the garden there. Okay, so it doesn't take long to clean this out. And I think I figured last year, compared to buying at my favorite grocery store, which obviously everybody's got to make a profit. Um, out of this little, I guess it's probably two by maybe six, um, I was able to get four or five hundred dollars worth of arugula and bib lettuce out of here. Same with bib lettuce, you just cut it off, keeps growing, and it's, it doesn't get any fresher than farm to table right there, I guess. I like to loosen the soil up each year. So I use compost in here. I use some potting soil, make sure we get some good drainage, get the weeds out. Weeds always like to grow, right? No matter what you're doing, you can baby a plant and they won't grow. But you discard the plant in your compost pile and it'll grow like crazy, or you'll find weeds that will grow up through the cracks in your sidewalk. camera a little bit. That's it. I just like to loosen, turn things up. Some of this has got some moisture in it. What's nice about drip irrigation is these uh, drips have a cone. The water comes up, hits the top, and then shoots back down in a cone. I try to keep it low not too worried about fungus. I'll do another video on uh, drip irrigation that you can see a little bit better, but with this drip irrigation, you can see there's just a main hose that comes in. Just quick punch it, run it up here, put these on different stakes. There's the brand I use. Um, they literally have limitless heads <laughs> for different applications, but it doesn't take a lot to prep this. Get it pretty level like this. Lean forward on my watch. I was going to call 911. It's not really an emergency. So I try to get it level like this. And it's real easy if you do get weeds in here. It's real easy to pull them out because the soil is always moist. And I don't plant in rows. I broadcast, spread my lettuce and my arugula. And 
It's just easier, I think. Like I said, this is the Korean hoe, one of my favorite tools. I have this short handled one, which is great for doing stuff like this, cleaning up around annuals, if you have annuals in your planting bed. Um, or I have a long handled one, so I don't have to bend over. But this is a great tool. I also use it to cleaning up edges. Um, with all that, it's just ready to get some seed in here. I'll probably do like half of this with the arugula right now. See, let me get this cleaned up a little bit. Uh, get this half this cleaned up with or planted with arugula. Um, put the cover back down. Well, I'll water it in. Put the cover down, and we'll wait to see what happens. All right. I don't have my outside water turned on. I'll turn it on later today. So. I'm just going to fill this watering can up, just an inexpensive $4 watering can, nothing fancy. Fill it up with a couple of gallons of water, and with this soft head here, I'll just sprinkle the seed in. This is Burpee Organics, Rocket Arugula is what's going to go in there. It's, uh, let's see, 35 days to harvest, so it's, I think March 10th, 11th, so in April I'll be able to harvest this. Depth is a quarter of an inch deep. Um, so, I said, I just scatter it on the surface and then I'll either run my hand over it or I'll just sprinkle it in and the water agitation will lower the seed in the ground. That's a good rule of thumb is a lot of people plant stuff too deep and the seed, the only way, only food it has to get to the surface is in the seed itself. So if you have tiny little seeds like these are, if you plant them, end up with somehow getting an inch or two deep, they may not germinate real well because they're so low in the ground. Same with tulip bulbs, daffodils. Two to three times the size of the bulb is how deep you want to go with those. Okay, we got that filled up. Let's go back outside and plant this stuff. All right, we got to stop the cameras here. Stop rolling the cameras. Remember at the beginning of the video when I said I was working with some new equipment? I was trying my new DJI Osmo. Uh, Action 4 camera and it worked great in the first part of this video when I was wearing it on a chest harness and in this next portion that you're going to see I was recording it or thought I was recording it on my chest harness but the on off beep and the recording beep are awfully close together so you'll see that <laughs> next section of the video I think I'm recording on the camera I'm not but I had my iPhone set up on a small tripod so you're not going to get to see all the detail of the work that I'm doing um, because it's just from the side here instead of, you know, first person view. But I have learned, I took that camera out on my bike yesterday, captured some great video. I now can tell the difference between the beeps and now you can get back to regular scheduled programming. All right. Ready to go out here. It's really windy out here today. They actually have a fire warning I saw on the weather app today. Not very often that we get fire warnings out here in southeast Wisconsin. Let me adjust this camera. Okay, these are very, very tiny. Two dollars and forty-nine cents. See. It's a lot of seeds and they're very, very small. So what I like to do is I'll just take them and I get a little cup. It's always the hardest part of planting because stuff is so tiny. I know there's all kinds of different spreaders you can use, but I just like to kind of sprinkle them around and then by the time I sprinkle these around like this they're gonna get even more spread out we'll let mother nature just take care of that like I said quarter inch that's not deep at all so we've got that planted to about First set of drip irrigation. And we'll take the 
old school watering can. And I like doing this because it's just the, uh, let me adjust this camera. Because it's just easy, it doesn't wash the seed away. I think this is probably a two gallon watering can. And I'll just water them in. And I can usually tell if there's enough water in the cold frame simply by um, if there's moisture condensation on here. Some days if I know it's going to rain and not be windy, um, I'll leave this open like this. Otherwise, if it's windy, obviously this can blow off and be a real challenge. Um, and Biggest challenge, or one of the challenges, is when you go to close this, if you don't hold this right, then this will dig into the soil. But I haven't found an easier way to do this. So just put this down here. That side's locked in. That side's locked in. And according to this, 35 days from now, I should have some arugula going in my cold frame. You said there's no condensation on it right now because it was dry, didn't water it all winter. Put two gallons on there, I believe this is a two gallon watering can. Yep, excuse me, just read the label. And watered that in <laughs> and we'll see maybe in another four or five days I'll put some more water in there just to make sure the seeds have that moisture content that they need and that's it